Finding out about the populations of different organisms enables scientists to understand how ecosystems change in response to biotic and abiotic factors. In this animation, we will see how different sampling techniques can be used to gather information in native upland woodland. Native upland woodland in the British Isles is dominated by Scots pine, which in turn is host to birds, red squirrels, lichen and insects. How to sample the canopy will depend on the organisms of interest. For example, capture mark release techniques are useful for monitoring populations of raptors, such as the osprey, and their migration behaviours. Tiny GPS transmitters can be attached to a bird's back and data obtained can be used to determine migration routes and trends in population over time and to understand the causes of population changes. A walk through the woodland provides an opportunity to observe and record numbers and species of birds, such as the crossbill. But obtaining data about other animals in this habitat may require more sophisticated techniques, such as using camera traps with motion sensors or infrared triggers activated when an animal passes. Randomised sampling should be chosen where habitats are uniform or for direct comparison of habitats, as in our big picture populations film. It's important not to introduce bias into sampling, so random numbers could be used to identify where to place quadrats. The number of plants can be counted or percentage cover may be estimated. Systematic sampling, such as a belt transect, is used for linear habitats, to observe zonation along an environmental gradient or where there is continual variation. Data can be analysed statistically to see if there is significant correlation with abiotic factors and to provide evidence of causal relationships. This could be at ground cover level, for example, measuring the percentage cover of a plant in relation to light intensity or soil type. Pitfall traps provide opportunities to assess the populations of some invertebrates. Multiple traps would be needed to gain reliable data. Leaf litter or soil may be taken back to the laboratory and placed in a Tolgren funnel. As the soil or leaf litter dries, organisms move downwards and eventually fall into the trap below the funnel. Abundance of organisms is represented per cubic metre of soil or leaf litter. When surveying any habitat, the investigator must consider the ethics of sampling wild creatures and the impact of potentially invasive or destructive techniques. Finally, data gathered must be considered carefully using the most appropriate statistical analysis.